Let's get a better perspective from our guests who are uh, joining us. Uh, we are joined by Samit Chauhan, who is the technical analyst and also giving us a fundamental view of yes securities. Joining us now is Natasha Shankar. Thank you very much, both of you, for coming on BTVI. Well, the markets are just about flattish. We've given up the morning gap up gains, uh, which we uh, got to see. Samit, I would like to come to you and talk about the technicals first here. Uh, from here on, Nifty has tried to touch that 9,000 uh, mark thrice in the past. In fact, in just about eight to nine trading sessions. Do you see Nifty crossing that 9,000 mark in the recent, uh, in the near future, or there could be further correction which could come in? Good afternoon. Uh, we have already seen more than 1,000 points rally in the last couple of months. So it, it has been a straight away rally and market has not given any major correction. And now uh, a major event is quite awaited, UP election outcome that would be uh, announced tomorrow. So before that, uh, 9,000 has been acting as a very strong resistance and it's a psychological level as well. So since last 6 to 7 trading session, we have been witnessing some consolidation and that consolidation was in a very small range of 100, 120 points. So at the lower end, 8900, 8850 seems to be a very strong support. And if we look at the broader chart structure, weekly and monthly chart structure is quite encouraging. And if we if we consider the bullish cup and handle pattern on weekly and monthly chart, uh, we expect uh, Nifty to surpass this hurdle quite soon. In fact, uh, we are of the opinion that uh, Nifty might uh, uh, test uh, new all-time highs quite soon. Uh, so we would uh, maintain our optimistic stance on the market. Any dip would be a buying opportunity. And at current juncture, the base has shifted higher now. So earlier it was around 8500, 8700. From there, it has now shifted towards 8800 to 8850. Uh, so if we have to take any directional call, obviously we would uh, like to take a, uh, uh, you know, anticipate, we would like to anticipate a breakout from a hurdle of 9000 and we would expect Nifty to move towards 9100, 9200. Expect 91 to 9200 on uh, the market soon. Uh, Natasha, are you on that uh, camp as well? Uh, uh, of course, it's been a strong rally in the last uh, couple of months. Uh, exit polls are predicting BJP leading in three out of five states, uh, but uh, they've been known to be wrong in the past. What if it does not play out to script? Uh, do you think markets uh, will be disappointed uh, and you could see a reversal or would it just be a short-term blip and the fundamentals uh, remain intact for moving uh, from strength to strength here on forwards? I think there are two things that we need to look at. One is, of course, evaluations of the broader indices, and uh, to that extent, it is uh, a little stretched if you're looking at about one, one and a half year kind of view. The second thing that would be driving the markets would, of course, be the fund flows. Now, uh, the, on the fund flow side, uh, if you're looking at the DIIs, you're looking at the FIIs, the flows have been very strong, and uh, that is something which is lending support to the markets uh, overall. Now, if these exit polls are wrong, then we could see a little bit of a blip, but that's a very short-term thing. I really believe that in the long term, the markets should be trending upwards, uh, driven by better fundamentals of the Indian economy, and eventually translation of that into the corporate earnings as well. So Natasha, you're saying the long-term view on markets remain bullish and it could just be a period of protracted uh, gains for the markets as well. Tell us, uh, you also mentioned about the valuations which actually do look a bit stretched because if I look at Nifty, it's almost trading at 18 times one year forward earnings. Uh, tell us, where do you expect the next leg of growth coming in there? Which sectors would you be watching out for? So we believe that, uh, yes, if you're looking at uh, the headline indices, you're looking at Nifty, yes, the valuations do look a little uh, stretched, but there are pockets of growth uh, where we could see, uh, sorry, pockets of value where we could see a lot of growth coming in. Uh, now, if you look at the auto numbers, they've been improving uh, month on month. Uh, of course, post demonetization, uh, there was a bit of a blip which came in over there. But since then, the numbers have revived. The companies have announced that they're going to be coming up with new models. In fact, they have have an entire slew of models uh, ready for launch uh, during the current financial year, which would be driving their growth as well. Now, that is an area which we are positive on. We, th we do believe that uh, there, is a, there are signs of revival in uh, the rural demand, which would help the two-wheeler players. And at the same time, uh, you know, with the seventh pay commission payout, as well as revival in demand from the urban side, that would help out the larger passenger vehicles as well. And uh, even on the commercial vehicle side, we've already seen a lot of pre-buying 
happening ahead of the changes in emission norms. So that's a sector which we're quite bullish on. And consequently, uh, we're bullish on the auto ancillaries as well. Uh, of course, you have to uh, take the right pick and uh, choose the fundamentally strong ones. But uh, that's an area which we continue to remain positive on. Now, driven by consumption, we are also uh, positive on other sectors which rely on consumption, like consumer durables. Uh, we've already seen the AC sales picking up. In fact, uh, the, the most of the AC companies have said that uh, they see much better demand coming in this year. And if uh, the summers are hot and they're already warm in uh, uh, Mumbai, but uh, if they continue to remain as such, then we could see an uptake coming in on the consumer durable side as well. And uh, finally, all sectors which are uh, related with the affordable housing segment, you know, you have almost 70 plus industries which uh, get a multiplier effect from the affordable housing. And even within that space, uh, com companies, uh, you know, which are uh, financing affordable housing, so that's an area which we are quite positive on. So overall, we are positive on these sectors and we think that these would be driving growth uh, in the coming months. Right. Uh, Samit, uh, coming to you, uh, markets have been sideways uh, over the last few sessions, but the metal pack has really been taking it on the chin. Um, uh, another weekday coming in uh, for uh, the metal universe. Uh, do you expect this weakness to continue going forward from here? Any uh, uh, shorting ideas that you're looking at? And consequently, a view on a JSPL as well. There's been a big upgrade on the target that's come in from City today. They're looking at the stock at 200 rupees, and that's really driven it up by about 6.5%. On the charts, uh, just a couple of the metal names that you think would be good shots as well as a call on JSPL. Yes, uh, we have already seen a stupendous rally from uh, lower levels of uh, you know February 2016 in in the entire uh, metal space. Uh, we have already seen massive rally in Tata Steel, Hindalco, Vedanta. Uh, so after seeing such a massive rally without any major correction, obviously, uh, uh, you know, such kind of uh, corrective move or a time-wise correction was quite evident. So as of now, we are uh, uh, we are seeing this uh, uh, you know corrective move as a pullback rally of the entire up move that we have already seen in last one, one and a half year. Uh, so we, won't, uh, we would uh, like to uh, stay light on uh, the entire metal space uh, rather than we would interpret this as a buying opportunity. Uh, as far as the levels for Tata Steel is concerned, the Tata Steel can move towards say 450, 455. But we would uh, avoid uh, going short at current level since the stock has already come off a bit uh, from recent highs. So we would rather wait for this dip to happen in case if Tata still comes around 450, 455. Uh, we would interpret this as a very good buying opportunity. Uh, if you look at the weekly monthly chart, uh, charts are quite encouraging and we expect uh, you know, Tata Steel to move beyond 500, 510 quite soon. Uh, before that, we would expect some consolidation. Consolidation would be in a very broad range of say 40 to 50 points. Uh, as far as uh, levels for Jinda Steel is concerned, uh, we can see bottoming formation uh, around its 100-120 uh, which has been acting as a very strong support of, of late. Uh, yes, monthly chart certainly looks encouraging and from here on, uh, we expect uh, Jindal Steel to move towards 148, uh, which is the 20 moving average on uh, 200 moving average on weekly chart. Uh, so any dip in Jindal Steel would be a very good buying opportunity. Now 115 to 110 would act as a very strong support. We just marked Bosch for you uh, some time back. The stock's up about 4%, so the buying actually continues, and the stock is going to touch the levels of 23,000, so up about 4% right now, Bosch, your top gainer on uh, Nifty. Samit, anything on Bosch on the charts? It's looking good. Should one enter at current levels or book profits? See, generally we don't track this counter considering its inconsistent volume, but uh, if we look at the daily chart, last three days price action has been very encouraging. Uh, today we are seeing a good positive traction with the uh, volume. So uh, looking at the daily and weekly chart, the stock has already completed its uh, retracement uh, around 21,000 and now it seems that it has already formed a strong base, at least a near term base around 21,000. Uh, so we would expect a continuation of this rally at least toward 23,000, 23,200. Uh, so any minor dip, probably 200 points from current level would be a good buying, buying opportunity considering the risk to reward ratio. See, in that case, one can keep a strict stop loss around 21,000 and expect a target of say 23,000 to 23,200. 
Nitasha, of course, uh, banks are always a part of uh, any market conversation and today uh, three big news triggers coming in. So the finance minister meeting with RBI officials later to take a stock of the NPA situation. You've also had uh, the CAG, Comptroller and Auditor of uh, India, talking about how top 50 de defaulters are under its scrutiny and they may initiate legal action if uh, wrongdoing or criminal intent has been found. And uh, Vijay Malia tweeting that he is open to a settlement uh, with uh, the banks. All concerns uh, taken in, NPA uh, worries continue to persist, provisioning is high, although it's not added incrementally on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Where are your preferences, if at all, in the banking universe, considering that it's been a stellar rally on the bank nifty in the last couple of months as well? I think if you're positive on the Indian economy, it's very difficult not to be positive on the banking sector. Uh, after all, that is a, like a backbone of the Indian economy. So we are positive on the bank side, but uh, essentially we are more positive on the private banking side as compared to the PSU banks because uh, the PSU banks have seen higher, uh, you know, NPA levels. Although the uh, bigger ones like SPI, they have been working towards trying to reduce that consistently. So if uh, we had to take a call, private banks over PSU banks, and within the PSU space, if you really want to uh, take a stock, then it would uh, definitely be the largest uh, PSU bank, which is SPI. All right. Uh, Natasha, also tell us the sense on fund flows. Uh, given a scenario where, you know, U.S. Fed could increase rates uh, next week and the consensus is 91 percent that the rates could actually go up going uh, forward. And uh, we've also seen, you know, FIs being net sellers in the last three to four months for our uh, markets. Do you expect the flows to shift to other emerging markets or to develop markets? In fact, that is U.S. in case of the rates go up. I think uh, the rate hike by the US Fed is uh, pretty much priced in at these levels. Uh, in fact, I would disagree with you if you look at the data for February and uh, for the month to date, FIIs have actually been net buyers in the equity markets. So uh, there has been a revival of interest in the Indian equity markets and if you're really looking at vis-a-vis uh, -vis the other emerging markets, India still continues to be a shining star. So yes, you could have these momentary blips for which could last a day or two or even a month or so. But uh, if you're looking at the longer tre uh, term trend, uh, India's uh, fundamentals continue to be strong and uh, that would attract fund flow uh, f uh, from the FII side. And at the same time, let's not forget that the DIS have been supporting the markets even during the times when FII funds were negative in November, December and in fact even in January. So with the kind of uh, flows that they've seen coming in uh, from the SIPs and coming in from the other uh, you know, applications uh, over there, uh, I think we do believe that the funds would continue to remain strong on the DII side. And FIS, yes, you would have a, day, a couple of months of blips but they should come back too. Right. Uh, Samit, just about a couple of minutes to go before we wind down today's trading action. Any trading ideas that you want to share with the viewers or are you sitting on cash right now ahead of uh, what is expected to be a volatile Tuesday? As we are anticipating a breakout uh, from this near-term hurdle of 9,000, we would like to stay with the flow. We have two recommendations, both would be on the long side. Uh, first one would be ICICI Bank, which has already corrected quite a lot in the recent past. Uh, it has clearly underperformed uh, its peer counters such as Axis Bank, uh, SGFC Bank. Uh, but we believe that uh, 270, 268 seems to be a very strong support. So it would be a buy from our side. 254.5 would be a stop loss and we have a directional call for a target of 298. Our other buy call would be on Bajaj Auto, which has already confirmed its price volume breakout last week uh, and now it is just consolidating in a uh, narrow range. But we believe that it would be a very good buying opportunity for a target of 3030 and a plus would be around 2800. All right, those are some of the technical calls uh, which are coming about. Uh, Natasha, just uh, a word on China. Do you see any fear? Because off late, China has, instead of injecting liquidity, which they've been doing for the last uh, six years, uh, starting 2011, uh, in the last few months, China has been actually sucking out a bit of liquidity. So do you see any concerns arising out of China in terms of their stance on policy?
the days whenever they do uh, announce something yes you have a blip coming in in the market but like i said earlier uh, we don't think that that's something that is going to last too long probably you'll have a couple of uh, you know 50 points down or 100 points down but the, given that the flows are quite strong we sh we expect that to revive even within the same day so not something that we are very concerned about as of now Fair point, uh, Natasha Samit. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, watching out for, of course, uh, the state assembly elections uh, tomorrow and how markets uh, react on Tuesday. Remember, Monday is a market holiday. Samit, Natasha, thanks for joining us. Uh, you guys have a good weekend and a happy holy to both of you. Let's uh, pull up the markets uh, as we wind down today's trading action. Another day of sideways uh, trade. So you opened uh, up by about half a percent, but have steadily given up those gains to trade in an extremely narrow range, 89.33. That's where we're shutting shop at uh, just about one tenth of a percent of a gain coming in. Uh, Bosch is your top gainer in trade, 3.3% of an up move coming in there. So that's been a stellar outperformer. Bharti Airtel and Bharti Infratel, both of them having a good day, adding about 1.2% each. Uh, Bank Nifty, absolutely quiet in trade, no real big moves coming in. But within that, Yes Bank was your top gainer today, up by about a percent. You also had good move coming in for an Indusin, again, up by about a percent. HDFC Bank also contributing to gains, but about 1 is to 1 advanced decline ratio on the Bank Nifty. L&T picked up momentum up by about a percent. TCS also having a good day of trade.